Silver polishing. How to polish your silver jewelry or any silver item using a silver polishing cloth. This is my quick tutorial. Okay, so let's get down to business. So with most silver purchases at Edge only, you receive a Maintain Your Edge silver polishing cloth with a care card and instructions on how to use it. And this is impregnated with silver polish. So inside the fabric, you will feel it. It's soft and it's fuzzy, but you can tell there's something inside it. So that's gonna work its magic. So there's one I've taken out of, of its plastic cover. And I'm gonna flip it over and show you how I polish something that's very badly tarnished or lightly tarnished. Now, I've intentionally put a pair of my sterling silver hoops in a moist environment in the sort of open air for months and months and months in order to show you how easy it is to remove silver polish and not to be put off by it or frightened by it. So as you can see, this is my ugly looking hoop that has been sitting out um, for a very long time. So if you were to leave your jewelry in the bathroom for months, this is what would happen to it, at least in Ireland. Every country has a different levels of pollutants in the air, but silver reacts to moisture and things like sulfur in the air. So depending on where you live, the process will have a different speed, but I've intentionally, as I say, left them in an environment that isn't friendly to silver instead of leaving them inside their box or inside a plastic bag. So don't be afraid to use some pressure. I'm, I'm not gonna go near the join where the earring post is, but I'm gonna hold down on the earring itself and I'm gonna push. And already, I just want you to see the dramatic change in just a few seconds. Do the same on the other side. And I'll just flip it over again. Be mindful of the post. And that is basically already nearly brand new looking now. Obviously the outer rim needs to be done. So normally if I wasn't in a hurry, I'd just take my time and gently work the cloth around the outer rim of the hoop. But if you're if you're just giving a quick rub before you go out on a night out, you're never gonna have to remove this much tarnish. You know, I really just did this for video effects so that you can really just see the silver tarnish is very much a surface issue and never to be put off by it or frightened by it. You know, your, your jewelry's not ruined, even if it looked as bad as this did when it started. You just need to give it a tiny little bit of love with the silver cloth that comes with it. And there, I mean, those are ready to wear on a night out. I mean, as, as good as new in just seconds. So that's how easy it is. Um, so yes, you'll never be put off by silver tarnish again. And with something like a ring, like this is one of our best-selling rooftop rings, and because it's got loads of angles and sides, don't be afraid to put pressure, you know, downward pressure. Silver is a soft metal, so by, by rubbing downwards, not only are you removing any fog or tarnish or fingerprints, but you're also helping remove any micro abrasions. So rings obviously get a lot of knocks and wears and tears, and that's part of the beauty. Like, jewelry should be worn and enjoyed. I'm never put off by by little scratches and knocks and bangs, but we still want it to be shiny and gorgeous. So you can put a little bit of weight and pressure down and it'll just make light work of any sort of polishing that you're doing. But I always give my jewelry a little rub on a night out, but it only just needs a tiny little rub. Um, it's only if you've had something in a box for a year, you know, I think particularly special occasion jewelry. Sometimes we're taking a tie bar or cufflinks out that we haven't worn for a number of months the last time we were at a black tie or at a wedding or a special event. So jewelry like that is the kind of jewelry that often you're having to give it a little bit of a rub. Rings like this, the wedge ring that I'm wearing, it's a mirror shine. It's a smooth, flat surface. We pierce these out of solid sterling silver sheets. So I'd always be giving this a little rub on a night out. Um, and then rings with nooks and crannies and crevices like this new rock ring and the worry ring i actually don't mind um i don't sort of they don't need the same attention to detail because you're not going to see a fingerprint on something like that but really that's what often causes marks on our jewelry is the oils in our fingertips now obviously you can see that they are black from the silver polish that's a you know that's part of using and working in jewelry we almost always have black fingers but it's impregnated with silver polish so that's what you can see and you can see there where i removed it on on the hoops 
Um, it's really sort of a great visual representation of how, how effective they are. And there's an old cloth. I mean, you can keep them for years and years. We use them every day. Store them in their little plastic folder or in a Ziploc bag. And it just helps keep the sort of polish that's in the fabric in good nick for longer. You don't want them to dry out completely. So don't worry if it starts to look ugly and dark like that, you can still use it. We use this all the time. And it's just a little simple rub. And then any hand cream, fingerprints are going to be removed instantaneously. Um, it's only when there's a severe tarnish situation, as I showed you with the hoops, where it might take a little bit more work with the cloth, or if it's had a reaction to a chemical soap. And when we're out and about, we don't have control over the products we're using. So we're, we're using chemical hand soaps all the time and we're doing our best to rinse them off, but they can cause sort of a bluey black chemical reaction at times. And that is when you wanna really work at it with your silver polishing cloth. But the best advice as always is to remove your jewelry when you're washing your hands to avoid any of those chemical reactions. So you take off your necklace, you take off your rings when you're having a shower or swimming in the pool, particularly with silver. So silver doesn't like salt, silver doesn't like chlorine. Basically, precious metals and chemicals are not good friends. Keep them apart. So I tend to put my jewelry in my pockets when I'm washing my hand. And you know, if I'm at a restaurant or out at night, that way you don't have to worry about leaving it behind. So your pockets are your friends. If you have them, take them off, wash your hands, soap them, dry them completely, and then put your ring back on when they're dry. And then when you're home, you can always give them a rough, a rub of the silver polishing cloth and it gives it a nice protective layer. But hopefully now that'll give you a bit more confidence with cleaning your silver jewelry. The last piece of advice that I would give is when you're polishing a pendant, to take it off its chain first only because you don't want to run the risk of weakening any of the links in the chain, you know, or any of the sort of um, the smaller joins. Obviously, with a chain, there's delicate points of the chain that you want to protect. So take the pendant off and then give it a rub and, um, and then put it back on its pendant chain. And it just makes sure that way that the, the chain doesn't get damaged, they don't tug on it. Or, or do anything that you didn't intend to do.